First, let's talk about model meshing. Mesh elements are used to determine displacements, stresses, and strains in a component or assembly using FEA or finite element analysis. To do this, the model must first be broken down into these finite elements. Mesh refinement is often needed due to small features, features in high stress areas, thin wall geometry, or areas of high aspect ratios. Let's take a look at what a default mesh looks like. So on our part, we can see various element sizes overlaid on the solid geometry. These elements are how the mesh is going to be created. You can see that in some areas of small fillets or chamfers that smaller elements are used. This is the default setting, but we can adjust these properties based on our needs. Let's take a look at what our options are in Fusion 360 to define these mesh elements. The default settings are set to model-based element size. This means that it will increase or decrease the mesh element size based on the geometry. We can also dictate an absolute size for our mesh or use some of our advanced settings. The element order setting, such as parabolic, will add mid-side nodes to help elements conform to curvature. In addition to the default settings, we also have adaptive mesh settings. These mesh refinement settings can be based on stress or displacement. In addition to that, we also have local mesh control. This will allow us to select certain faces or edges and locally control the mesh element sizes. Let's take a look at what adaptive mesh refinement can do to our results. The image on the left has a high stress concentration directly in the middle of our fillet. This model was created using the default mesh element sizes and a simulation was run. Note that in the second image, the stress concentration is moved up slightly higher on the fillet. This was done using an adaptive mesh refinement. This is a convergence based on the stress located on the part. You'll notice also that the stress value is slightly higher in this case. There are many instances where mesh element size changes will not only shift where the stress concentration is, but also the amount of stress concentration. This means that we're converging on a higher value, but we're also getting a better isolation of that stress value. There is of course a limit. Let's also take a look at what local mesh refinement can do. The image on the left is the one done using adaptive mesh refinement. The image on the right, however, I manually selected the fillets and I dictated a smaller mesh element size. You'll notice that the max stress value in the left image is 241 megapascals, while the one in the right image is 244. So by refining the mesh a little bit more, we converged at a slightly higher stress value. Let's summarize what we've learned about meshing. The default mesh settings are applicable in most cases. It's a good idea to run a simulation based on these default settings and find out where stress concentrations are. Adaptive refinement can help reduce mesh element size in target areas of stress or displacement, and ultimately a local mesh refinement allows for a focused reduction in element size in areas of stress concentration. All of these options used together can give you a good idea of where stress concentration lies and get you a higher resolution image of where the stress may be in your parts.